Welcome to night number 138 of History Bedtime Stories in bed in our pajamas. And tonight I'm actually going to read you a story. It's out of a great book I happened to find a few years ago at a garage sale. It's called Detroit, An Industrial Miracle. And it's written by George W. Stark. It was published in 1951 as part of the Detroit 250th anniversary celebrations. So Detroit founded in 1701 by Antoinette de la Mole, sort of Cadillac for the French. And upon the city's founding as Detroit, which eventually anglicizes into Detroit, we start counting city anniversaries from 1701. So 1951, 250. And this is actually uh, important right down in the corner. You can see it's published by the Detroit Directory of Businesses and Industry, which meant it was a little bit of a yearbook for 1951. Who's who, who's making what, what are they famous for? What have they amassed as far as fortunes, products and raw materials here in the city? The book's lovely. This actually happens to be a signed copy, very schnazzy but it covers things like famous former Detroiters, Antoinette de la Mose, Serti Cadillac, the founder of the city. It covers stories of guys like Lewis Cass, uh, the early automobile. But the section I'd like to read you tonight made me uh, giggle and I think you'll enjoy it as well. This is under the denote for Michigan Bell, the telephone company. It says, to at least one man, back in the early months of 1876, the telephone wasn't worth a nickel. He was a Detroit banker who flatly turned down a loan sought by one of his clerks who had just heard of the invention of the telephone and became one of a group wishing to start up a telephone company in Detroit. The telephone is only a toy, said the banker, and I wouldn't give you five cents for it. This early setback in the final fruition of the telephone was actually pretty short-lived. The people interested in setting out on a telephone venture did raise the needed money and set out to build one of the most important industries of modern America. Down through the years, the tidbits of evidence on who actually organized the first company in Detroit have fused and molded themselves together until it is now generally recognized that the credit for introducing the telephone to this city goes to two men. One was George W. Blatch, president of the American District Telegraph Company, capitalist, public office holder, and business promoter. The other, William A. Jackson, a Detroit telegraph operator, lineman, and employee of Mr. Blocks. Time has left an impenetrable haze across the chronicle of events and the legal paper that led to the formation of the first company in Detroit but it is clear that on October 31st, 1877, the Articles of Association were signed and filed in Lansing for the Telephone and Telegraphic Construction Company of Detroit. Blotch was president and Jackson was general manager. Before the Telephone and Telegraph Construction Company of Detroit had been in actual operation, there was a single working telephone line in Detroit. This line was installed in the month of June, 1877, between the Frederick K. Stearns Drug Company and its laboratory two miles away. The Stearns line was installed by Jackson, who obtained two telephones from Gardner G. Hubbard, Alexander Graham Bell's first business manager. At the time, the Stearns Company displayed a sign in its window which read, Come in and talk over the amazing long distance telephone. Throw your voice almost two miles. A clerk for the drug company later wrote, People flocked in, of course, but most of them were frankly skeptical. They were sure it was fake, and the voice they heard through the transmitter was that of someone shouting through a speaking tube from the upper floors. I was in charge of the public demonstration, and remember, I had a difficult time convincing Detroiters of 1877 that they weren't trying to pull one over on them. But nevertheless, those telephones between the store and the laboratory were a great saving in time and messenger service. Interest was aroused and Detroit quickly became telephone-minded. About a year after the Stearns installation, Thomas A. Watson, Bell's assistant, visited Detroit. And after canvassing, signed up 73 subscribers. 53 of those lines were connected to a crude switchboard and thus bolstered the first telephone exchange in the city of Detroit. The article goes on to uh, share quite a bit of history about how 
Bell Telephone turns into Michigan Bell, goes through several mergers and acquisitions before becoming the telephone company we know today. But to think that people were amazed that it was a selling feature and a marketing feature for a pharmacy and druggist to have telephones connecting two miles apart is really pretty incredible when you think today I film these videos on my cell phone and almost all of us can call across the country at the touch of a button. You give us a like, share, or comment down below, we'll enter you into a raffle for a whole bunch of vinyl Detroit stickers. Wash your hands. We'll see you tomorrow night.